We've got some of the actors and stunt guys rehearsing some of the fight scenes for the upcoming movie. We're swinging on ropes and having full tilt martial arts fights. I love it, man. This is kind of really, you know, what it's all about, you know? It was pretty intense action and wire work. Gunfire, explosions. Some of the fight, you've got Chinese versus Chinese. Some you've got Western guys fighting Chinese. So we're trying to break up the style a little bit, you know, make it a bit more interesting. It's just kicking off now. All hell's going to break loose soon. Be Mark. My name is Mike Lambert. I'm the fight choreographer on Mummy 3, and this is what fight choreography is all about. Everybody's different. Everybody, you know, everybody moves differently, and sometimes, um, you know, some people are more natural than others. We just got to try and find out each individual's strengths and weaknesses, and try to work with that, and, and try to bring out the best in that person. You know. Honestly, the energy levels for me, you've like you've moved up a gear. Good. Last week you were in second gear, now we're into third gear. We're trying to just a little bit of everything, really. What looks good on camera? You know, some kicks from Taekwondo, some. Wolf shoe style kung fu moves. Energy, ready and action! Lynn's character is more wushu, obviously she's Chinese, so she's like more wushu and flowy martial arts. Rick's style is more, obviously, he's not going to be too fancy, it's raw and ready. Yeah. Maria, that's uh, Evie's character, she's a little bit more refined, so she's a, a little bit experienced in martial arts, but also she's got a little bit of street fighting as well. I'm Alex O'Connor. And then Alex, which is played by Luke Ford, uh, he again is a little bit stylish, but again with a little bit of his father's sort of raw street fighting style mixed up. As soon as I got the role, I had to start my martial arts training, so we went through a massive process of cardio, um, weights and martial arts fighting uh, for about five days a week for a good two, three months, and then down to three times a week just before filming so you don't do any injuries. My goal on this picture was just to be committed to not hurting myself in any way. So the best way to do that is to strengthen the muscles as best you can. I did the sword training for a month in advance and the weapons training. And when I did the weapons training, the weapon guy was like, oh, you're good. <laughs> ah! I worked for a couple of weeks on wires. I loved it so much. I felt like Peter Pan. Prepare to die! We literally had four hours to shoot this whole sequence where I have to fly off of a curtain into something else, jump on a desk, do a handless cartwheel. And we had like five minutes to shoot the last thing, which was a flip off of a chandelier. And on the first take, I got it. I watched the take back as everyone was laughing. I was like a little kid. I was like, oh my god, that was so much fun. So we're setting up for the big rope swings. Whenever you have to put the cameras in odd corners and stuff, you usually know you're on the right track. Today we're swinging Alex and Lynn off the scaffolding and they take out two of the bad guys. Meanwhile, uh, Brendan will dive off onto the floor to retrieve his guns. A fight starts between Evie and Choi at the same time. Alex is beating up Wilson, one of the other characters, so it's, it's, it's all happening in the sequence. Yeah, this is my stunt. I'm actually quite nervous. The first big stunt I've ever done in my life, so hopefully it turns out really good. Yes, sir. Okay, now, action. Climax of the Evie Choi fight, and um, what's going to happen is Evie's going to climb, and we call it a monkey climb. It's almost like a pseudo wrestling where she climbs her, wraps her leg around the neck, hits her with an elbow, and then throws in some boxes. That's a pretty good gag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. So it should be pretty cool. Check it out. Feet, feet, set, three, two, one, go! Believe me, when you see it on camera, it's really violent. Oh, that was, for me, that was, that was fantastic. Looks like Charlie's not going to get up for about three weeks.
This is the part where Alex drops in from the top mausoleum part into the actual crypt. So we're just doing a gag where we'll suspend him above one of the horses and release him. And then the fight starts. We'll have Ming doubling Lin, and uh, she's going to be bouncing around the walls, generally beating Alex up. Probably the most interesting bit about it is Luke's fighting the assassin, who he thinks is a, is a male ninja, but then a little bit later down the line, whips the mask off, and then lo and behold, it's a woman. So that's probably the most gender-bending sort of secret in this fight. Lin is a girl that's immortal. She has a responsibility to protect the tomb, to protect the evilness that could come out of the Emperor if he was to be raised. And that's how I get involved, because here I am not thinking what the consequences of me opening this tomb up. This is the last battle between the US and the Emperor. It's like they've been waiting thousands of years to finally live or die. This is it, the moment. Lynn's mother is played by Michelle Yeoh. We always imagined her in this role. We started talking about who could play the villain. Jet Li was the first person that came to mind. Two great icons of Chinese cinema going head to head for the first time. In this part of the world, they are gods. They're in the pantheon of cinema. So to see the two of them together is quite wonderful. Very exciting for me. For my part, the whole movie, that's the most exciting day, you know, fight with Michelle. She's uh, one of my best uh, friends. It's amazing, you know. He's fantastic. Always was, always will be. And he's just so accurate, which really makes it, uh, you, you feel safe when you fight with him. We're having a fight sequence with Jet Li and Brendan Fraser. It's the Battle of the Titans. Yeah. And you pull out the blade and it's fused. I pull it out fused? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. I hear it's a good script. I should read it sometime. <laughs> Ready and action! Cut! We did well on the first quarter of the fight, or the jet side of the first half. Now we're doing the Brendan side of the first half. In round one, the Emperor is the winner. In round two, Rick O'Connell is the winner. The Emperor has to use tricks to get himself out of the mess. Rick's studying a form of a, it's like an Israeli martial arts called Krav Maga, and it's basically a real, like, practical sort of street fighter, like a very short, sharp, direct move like A to B. Krav Maga is a system of combat defense. If you think of it as a triangle, you go to the problem rather than let it come to you. When someone's going to strike you overhead, you go to the problem. Block, counterattack. You walk up into it towards the light and the crane will follow. Gently, he swings an arm at you and it hit the fringe of my hair for the first time. And, you know, I thought that was close. So we were gonna go for another tag and he swung the hook, same thing again, and it hit the hair again. He's that precise. He knows exactly what he's doing. There's really no margin for error in working with him. He'd come over and he'd, he'd sort of poke my chest to make sure I was wearing a chest pad because it's going to put a boot into me. This time I also have a fight scene with him. He's a very tough guy, very tough, very strong. B marker! B marker! Mark. Two movie icons, both known for their physicality. <laughs> so the idea of a big, real, brutal, exciting mano a mano fight between them, I think, is cool something you haven't seen before. Fighting, it's a dance, really. It's a performance. We're creating something that doesn't really exist. We're just trying to find original ways of doing moves that we've seen before, but trying to shoot them differently and perform them differently.
but hopefully every little fight will have something special that will make the audience go, oh, that, that was cool.